Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to host a Minecraft Pocket Edition and Minecraft Windows 10 Edition Beta 0.12.x server. So by 0.12.x, I mean just any 0.12 version that releases, whether it be 0.12.1, 0 0.2, and so on. I've explained it a million times, but uh, 0.12.1 is currently the latest version, so that's what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. So what you want to do is go down into the description and download the PocketMine 0.12.1 zip file. This is what I have right here, so I'm going to go ahead and just extract it. Uh, you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to have mine up on my desktop, so just copy it over there, and uh, it's ready to go. So open that up, and out of these th three things here, all you really need to pay attention to is the start.cmd. So go ahead and open that up, and then you'll have the list of languages right here. So you just have to type in the uh, little initials for the language that you want. So for example, to get English, I just type in EN. For Spanish, you type in ES, you know, whatever. EN. Uh, do you accept the license? Y for yes. Do you want to skip the setup wizard? You don't have to, but I always do, so I'm just going to put in Y for yes, and the server will start itself. So for whatever reason, mine isn't actually starting properly, and I'll explain it in a little bit. But for most of you, it should just start up right away. And then all you need to do is type in stop to stop the server. And that's how you always want to stop the server is by typing that. You don't want to just close it and hit, by hitting the X button. Type in stop. But since mine isn't working, I actually do have to press the red X to get it to stop. So what you want to do is open up the server.properties file. So just, go, just right click it, go to open with. And then you can either use WordPad or Notepad or whatever text editor you have. I'm going to go ahead and use WordPad because I like it a lot. And then uh, we need to configure this here. So the M the MOTD uh, is just basically like the title of the server. So Dogger 20, I'll just type in Dogger server, that works. Uh, the server port, this is the, well, obviously the port number that the server is going to be running on. So by default, you want to leave it at 19132. But if you have multiple servers, you want to change the port for each server. So uh, for like your second server, you want to change it to 19133. For your third server, you might change it to 19134, 19135, and so on. So you know you only can have uh, one program using that port at a time, and that's my problem right now. Is for whatever reason something is using 19132, and I have no idea what it is. Maybe you know somebody else in the house is doing something, but uh, for whatever reason I can't use 19132. And uh, again, I don't know why. So that's just something that's a problem on my end. But for most people, it should be just fine. And on my server, where the Pokemon or the you know all of my servers are hosted, uh, the one nine one three two works just fine. So yeah, it's just something on my side. Not sure what it is, but whatever. So I'll just set it to one nine one three five so I can actually run the server. Whitelist, we can just leave that. I'll just leave it to off. Uh, announce player announcement or <laughs> announce player announcements. Announce player achievements, leave that on. Spawn protection, you probably want to bump that up quite a bit. So a lot of people like a really high spawn protection. I generally just leave mine at default, but some people really like a high spawn protection. So just set it to whatever works best for you. 16 is default, I'll just put mine at 24 for whatever reason. Uh, the maximum amount of players. Pocketmine really, you know, when it comes to amount of players, isn't all that resource heavy. Now, Pocketmine alone, just even with nobody on it, is relatively resource heavy. But the problem is, is, is that once you have a lot of players on it, and they start to fly around and generate new parts of the world, it will eat up your CPU like no other. Because I don't know what it is, but Pocketmine just isn't really optimized that all, that all that well. So what you want to wait for is the next Pocketmine update, which I will make another one of these videos on when that update comes comes out but that one's going to be you know heavily optimized for this kind of stuff but currently uh, you know if you have a computer that's just dedicated to hosting you know this server or you know it has you know two servers on it or something like that it's a, it's just dedicated to hosting servers you can set that up a little bit higher but if you have you know a home computer that you use quite a bit or somebody else uses quite a bit you might want to bring that down a little bit because like I said as the world expands you know the lag starts to really pick up and a computer that's running it will go slower so 20 is what I'm just gonna leave mine at because this isn't even a real server allow flight I'll just leave that off uh, spawning mobs and spawning animals I'll just leave those on but if you're running this on a little bit older computer and that has problems with lag and stuff like that and the server is slowing down in general uh, some of those you know could be because of uh, or the reason behind that could be because of animals and mobs so if you have that kind of problem you can you can try to turn those off 
or I can show you another thing here in a second that can actually limit the amount of those on the server. Game mode by default is survival, which is zero. You can change it to one for creative, and I think two is like adventure. I forget exactly what it is, but uh, by default, just leave it to zero. Now, force game mode, what that'll do is force, uh, you know, whenever somebody joins, it'll force them to whatever game mode is set right here, right there. So, by default, whenever somebody joins, their game mode is going to be zero or whatever you set it to. But as an admin, you can you know, you can change your game mode to creative or whatever. So let's say that the world was set to survival and I set myself to creative. If I have forced game mode turned on, then the next time I join the server, uh, my game mode will go back to survival or whatever is set to or whatever it's set to up here. Uh, but if I have force game mode turned off and I set myself to creative, then the next time I join, I'll still be in creative uh, until I change it back manually. And the reason I always have this one turned on is because I don't know when somebody is allowed to change their game mode or something like that. If they, you know, cheat and change their game mode, I don't know when that happens. But having the force game mode thing turned on just makes it easier to catch them and makes it a lot more annoying for them. So I just tend to leave that on. And you know, I never know when I actually set somebody to creative just temporarily. So if they want to help out with something or if one of my other admins does that, so you know, the next time that they join, they will be in survival. So that just assures is that nobody gets stuck in creative unless they are like really really like persistent and they want to leave their computer on you know 24 7 without ever leaving the server just so that they can always have creative that's you know the one way around it but not very likely anyways uh, hardcore mode I always leave that off PvP I generally turn off you know sometimes I'll start off with the server with having you know PvP turned on but then people ruin it and then I just turn it off uh, difficulty, I'll just leave that at 1. Generator settings, I've never really messed with that myself. Uh, the level name is equal to world, that's default, and that would be the name of the world that will pop up under here. So in the worlds folder, there will be you know all the worlds that your server has. And uh, the name of the directory that will be created in here that has all of the you know world data is going to be named after whatever you set this to right here. So I'm just going to leave mine at world and when I start the server, a world will be generated in this folder with the name world. Uh, level seed, you can just put a seed there if you want. Level type, default, enable query, on, that's default. All this stuff you can just leave to default, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and hit save. Uh, and now to look at the uh, thing I was talking about earlier, you want to open up pocketmind.yml. So again, you can just use Word Pad or Notepad to open this up. And this one is a little bit more complicated, so I recommend not messing with this one all that much. Uh, but somewhere in here, I think closer to the bottom, let's see, spawn limits right here. So you can limit the amount of you know monsters, animals, water animals, and ambient, whatever ambient is, uh, that spawn. So if you want to limit monsters like 40, animals to 5, water animals to 3, and ambient to 10 you know that can increase performance if you want to leave monsters and animals and stuff like that turned on so uh, just a little trick there a lot of this stuff you don't really want to mess with unless you know what you're doing but that one is a little bit easier to mess with so you know, if you if you need it anyways the server should be ready to go actually no not yet because I want to show you plugins so I have a plugin on my a plugin here on my desktop called peer perms or peer permissions so I'm just gonna drop that into my plugins folder and to get plugins it's just on Pokemon's forum website and you can just download plugins from there uh, just plop that into the plugins folder and then run the server and it should be good to go so let's see if mine actually loads there it is so right now it's generating the world that you know, that generally doesn't take long anymore it used to but now it took three and a half seconds Look under the worlds folder and you can see the world has been generated there. So just running a few commands, if you type in say and then put in you know words, hola, you know, it'll say hola to everybody in the server. Type in game mode and then uh, you know their game mode number, so like or the game mode number that you want. Zero, like survival, creative, or you can just type in it type it out completely, creative, and then you have to put in the player name, like so. So it says game mode, mode, and then the player. Uh, you know, it'll, if you type in the command wrong, it'll show you how to actually use it. So if somebody was in the server with the name, whoops, let's see, game mode creative, with the name Dogger, type it in like that. But currently, there's nobody in the server with that name, so it says the player cannot be found. Uh, let's see what else. 
What's another good one? Um, the give command, so you type in something like give, and then item, so if I wanted to give cake, and then you have to put in a number, well you don't have to put in a number, but I'm going to put in a number. Uh, cake 64 to dogger, and then it would give that player that amount. So you don't actually have to type in the amount, but that is, you know, if you want to, then you can. Uh, what else? Uh, there is a reload command to just reload the server, and that's something you don't really want to do all that much because it can lead to resource leaks, and uh, you know you just, you just don't want to do it. But if you have to, then it's there, and I have done it on my own server several times just because I had to. Uh, with the plugins, so one of the plugins in Pure Perms is uh, now I forget. I think there's one like PP Perms. Nope, that's not it. Uh, what else could it be? Uh, nope. Nope. Groups. There we go. Uh, so the command groups brings up a pure perms command. So once you have a plugin added, uh, you can look at the different commands that he uses. And that one was groups, and it'll show you the registered groups there. So that's like a custom command, basically, and just does custom stuff like that. Uh, so there is that so you, then you can just look at the pokemon website to see a list of all the commands so you know what's up so i don't have to show you anymore now to end the server i think i said something about this earlier just type in stop wait for the server to end and then it should say segmentation fault and that might sound like a bad thing but it's not it means the server has stopped successfully so then you can close it with the red x and uh you know the world has been saved and stuff like that so it's ready to go Really quick, I want to go over two things. So first off, I want to go over port forwarding. So I never actually show port forwarding in this video or any of my server videos because port forwarding is different for everybody. So to explain uh, port forwarding, uh, your router has a list of ports or a number of ports that it can use to have you know different people connect to it from the outside. It's a bad way to explain it, but I'll go with it. So. The port that this uses is 19132 that I went over earlier. So by default, the port 19132 is closed on your router, meaning that nobody can join, uh, you know, through you, nobody can join through that port. So no, nobody can join your server. So what you need to do with port forwarding is open that port so that people can join the server through the port 19132. Kind of a bad way to explain it, but hopefully it makes sense. Uh, so to figure out how to port forward, you need to figure out what your router name is or router model number, and then you need to go into Google or whatever search engine you use, probably Google, and look up you know how to port. Oops, how to port. What am I doing? Forward, and then you put in your uh, router model. So mine would be like the Netgear Nighthawk, and then I'd figure out you know there, there's a video here. A uh, couple of links here, and that's how you figure out how to port forward on your router. So, you know, I have a Netgear Nighthawk. You know, somebody else might have, you know, a Linksys or a Belkin or you name it, you know, or whatever. You know, they might have something else, and even somebody who has a different model Netgear router. You know, it's just going to be different. So I never show that because it is different for everybody. So just look up how to port forward your router. Open the port that is listed under your server properties video, video server properties file, and then you know people can join from the outside. Another thing to keep in mind is external and internal IP addresses. So I see this all the time where somebody posts their internal IP address and you know tells people to join. Your internal IP address is assigned to you by your router, and it you know it's a, it assigns an IP address, a unique IP address to every device connected to it. So, you know, for example, my router assigns a a IP address that starts with 192.168. So, if your IP address that you're handing out to people or showing people starts with 192.168, they won't be able to join from outside of your home or outside of your network. That is something a lot of people mess up a lot. So what you need is your external IP addresses, IP address, which is assigned to you from your ISP. So that is assigned to your connection that goes directly to your house, that your, your router intercepts or whatever. That is what you wanna give out to people. So to find that, it's really simple. Just go on to Google or whatever and look up what is my IP. And that'll show you your public or external IP address so that people know uh, what it is or what you know what it is so you can hand it out to people and then you know it'll work 
So yeah, that's just something I see all the time where people give out their internal IP address and it just doesn't work. So with that being said, that is how you host a PocketMine server. So uh, that really is all I wanted to cover with that part of it. But what I also want to show is actually joining it with Minecraft Windows 10 edition. So I have this here and I have my VPS or my server that has the latest version of PocketMine running. So I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna go ahead and join the server. So go over here. You can see it has dogger20011.com with the port 19132. Click on that and it should join building terrain there we go so i am in the server you know running around so it does work with pokemon or pokemon it does work with minecraft windows 10 edition along with pocket edition so you know to type in you know command like game mode creative and now i'm in creative mode and i can fly and stuff like that and if i quit come back I should be in survival again because force game mode is turned on, so that's just, I guess, an example of that. Yep, survival mode, so uh, that is how to host a server, and just something I also want to go over here at the very end is a mod locator for MCPE. So a lot of people have been asking when I'm going to update that, and I'm really hoping to get an update pushed out tomorrow with 0.12.x content in it, so you know that's what people have been waiting for. And I've been waiting to hear back from another developer to work on something really cool that was supposed to be in tomorrow's update, but I don't know if it's going to happen to see if I can get, you know, that reply. Because if I get the reply, I can just finish something up really quick and uh, have it ready to go. But if the developer doesn't reply by tomorrow, then I will just submit the update without that feature. And I'll go into detail more, you know, after the update comes out so everybody knows what I'm actually talking about. Because a lot of you probably think that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But yeah, just waiting for somebody else to uh, uh, reply right now. And I do have quite a bit of stuff added to it, but I'm going to keep continuing to add more stuff like, you know, more textures and servers and mods and stuff. I'm going to continue to add more stuff tonight. So hopefully by tomorrow there's enough stuff in it so it's actually worthwhile to update it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or anything, comments, leave a comment down below because I know this is kind of confusing, especially since I'm not showing you how to port forward and stuff like that. So if you have any port forwarding questions or IP address questions, just leave your comments down below and I will do my best to reply to those. So thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.